Tintable. <laughs> Tonight, bedtime story. I hope you're all sitting comfortably. Then I shall begin. We're reading the diabolical Mr Tiddles. For as long as he could remember, all Harry wanted in the whole wide world was a cat. A furry, purry friend to care for and to play with. And you'll never guess what. This was Harry's lucky day. Today was Harry's birthday. And a cat is just what he got. What a perfect pussycat, said Harry excitedly. I'll call him Mr Tiddles. Every day, Harry made sure that Mr Tiddles was as happy as a cat could possibly be. Every night, he tucked Mr Tiddles up on the comfiest armchair. And he stroked his tummy until he drifted off into a dreamy sleep. Harry loved his new friend. Mr Tiddles loved Harry too. He wanted to show him exactly how much of a wonderful friend he was. First, he brought Harry a fresh mouse. But Harry just went a fully colour. Then he left Harry's favourite treat at the bottom of his bed. Triple chocolate Cream and custard cake with extra banana jam. Mmm, delicious, said Harry, as he licked a dollop of cream. But where did this come from? Mr Tiddles kept quiet. The next day, Harry found a pogo stick and a train tooting its way around his bedroom. What's going on? Where has all this come from? he cried. Mr. Tiddles just grinned. Day by day, things got even more puzzling. Before long, Harry's room was awash with rock star guitars, peculiar paintings, fearsome dinosaurs, yummy jelly beans, and whooshing jetpacks. Then one morning, Harry woke up to find a horse named Alan in his bedroom. This was the last straw. What are you up to, Mr Tiddles? You rascally cat. Mr Tiddles didn't make a sound. He just went a little red in the face. What mischief was Mr Tiddles up to? When Harry was asleep. Mm. That evening, Harry followed Mr Tiddles as he vanished into the night, slinking along high wires, leaping across rooftops and dumping over rickety fences. It was a real job for Harry to keep up until Mr Tiddles reached the home of the Queen. Oh my, said Harry, as the rascally Moggy squeezed through the railings and started to scale the wall. Mr Tiddles is a cat burglar, how diabolical! <sighs> Taking a deep breath, Harry followed Mr Tiddles. Over the palace gates, up the palace wall, and into the royal bedroom. Stop! shouted Harry, just as Mr Tiddles swiped the crown right off the royal head. Mr Tiddles froze, the Queen woke up and Harry started to fall. Help! he screamed. Whoosh! Quick as a flash, Mr Tiddles dropped the royal crown and dived across the room. With a swish and a swoop and some splendid acrobatics, Mr Tiddles grabbed Harry's shoelace and hauled him back through the window. Phew, that was close, sighed Harry, as he and Mr Tiddles landed in a heap at the Queen's slippers. The Queen, however, was not amused. Guards, she called, arrest these two intruders for acts of cheekiness against the crown. No, 
cried Harry. Please, your majesty, Mr Tiddles isn't a bad cat. He's just been taking things because he cares for me so much. You mean he's stolen other things? cried the Queen in dismay. She scratched her royal head and a thought popped into her royal brain. Bing! It's wrong to steal, she snorted, but I think Mr Tiddles has learned his lesson. I can see that he isn't a bad cat. If he promises to give everything back, we'll say no more about it. Mr Tiddles looked up at the Queen and gave the cutest furry purry pussycat smile he could muster. With no time to lose, Mr Tiddles returned the grand piano and the conductor to the opera house. The whooshing jetpack to the astronaut, the noisy guitar to the rock star man and Alan to a very relieved cowboy. When they were finished, Harry gave Mr Tiddles his biggest, best squeezy hug. The two of them agreed there and then that having each other was the best present that anyone could wish for. The end. Good night. Sleep well. <laughs>